From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. As I said last week, this is our Easter program. And oh, how I love Easter, and we're going to be talking so much about it today. Let me give you a few headlines here that we'll be using. Christianity, what is it today? Is it unconverted converts? Also, when the crosses are gone, the world will go mad. And the great salvation, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. How wonderful to know that the great solution for all of our problems is that resurrection, right? Now, I want to get into something here today. My fondest memories, and I confess to you what it was. When I was a little girl growing up, my mom would always get me a nice new little dress, dress us up, and we'd go to church. And, you know, children really remember things. And I always appreciate all the pictures that are sent to us from our viewers. Here's a picture of a little girl. We love your show. We catch it every week. Our little four-month-old loves Jack Van Impey. Blessings to you all, Eric. Oh, my. Isn't she beautiful? She'll remember you, Jack. I don't blame her. And here's another one. Here's a little, little boy watching me. Read what it says on the back. Okay. Oh, yeah. It says... He's fond of Rexella, too. That well, makes two of us. I love him, too. <laughs> and here's something else. We thought you might like to see one of your loyal viewers watching your program. Happy, who is almost 18 years old, always sits and watches your program. Jim and Carly. And, of course, Happy the cat. Here we have another kitty cat watching me. And uh, by the way, we have a kitty cat, 20 years old, next month. And Jack, here are some puppy dogs. My ministry's gone to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> a gentleman who sent this to us with, with his four puppies there watching Jack Ben. If he'd gone to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jack, as children, we do remember, don't we? Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to have that kind of a memory. And you know what? It's good to get your children watching good things on yeah. TV. Oh, Rick, I love those little children and those pets, especially little kitties. And you know, Jesus said in Mark 16, verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, all of creation, including animal life. Hmm. And you know, they come and sit with us while we're having devotions every morning, our two little cats. Oh, yeah. It's precious. Acts 1, 8, you shall be witnesses unto me to all the world. We're doing it. And Jesus says, when this message of the gospel of the kingdom is being preached to all the world, I will return. We're doing it. And Jesus is coming soon. And by the way, I believe animals will be in heaven. We're going to have our requests. Read Romans 8, 22 and 23. Even men like John Calvin, the institutes by Calvin, men like that of that caliber for 500 years have claimed that animals in heaven will be with us. And we have a video on that subject, isn't it? Oh, that's great, Jack. Well, something that my mother always said to me, you know, she'd be dressing me up real good to go to Easter service. And she'd say, now remember, Exella, actions speak louder than words. Woo, that sunk in and I never forgot it. She said it to me a thousand times. But does that apply to everyone, not just children, but to everyone. Obama to Christians, forget you, religious voters have little faith in this president. Let me read a little bit here. President Obama delivered official messages for Passover, Ramadan, and Diwali. But for Easter, not so much. The White House came under fire this week for neglecting to issue official statements for either Easter or Good Friday, though Mr. Obama did take time Friday to address Earth Day, a celebration observed by tens of thousands of pagan worshipers of the Earth goddess, Gia. God forgive him. Oh, and here we go. 
This basket of Easter problems underscores Mr. Obama's continuing problem with perceptions of his religious identity. In some quarters, over whether Mr. Obama truly observes the faith he publicly professes. An August 2010 report from the Pew Research Center showed that the better the American people get to know Mr. Obama, the fewer think he is a Christian and the more believe he is a Muslim. Oversights like the missing Easter message definitely don't help. And then going on to World Net Daily, most biblically hostile president ever. Is wow, Obama. Is of course, our president. The Reverend Franklin Graham on a recent session of Morning Joe commented on Obama. He has said he's a Christian, so I just have to assume he is. This remark generated scare headlines. Franklin Graham questions Obama's Christian faith. Yahoo News, but Graham is not alone in his doubts. Ooh, I think you'll admit those are very strong headlines. The Washington Times, the World Net Daily, and the Reverend Franklin Graham doubting if our president is a Christian. That one really most biblically hostile president ever is Mr. Obama. Well, I'm going to ask Jack what he thinks. Does one's works really reveal who we are, Jack? Yeah, if they're not the works that follow the pattern of God's holy word and the commandments of God. Now, I'm not going to refer to these newspapers right now. I'm going to refer to the holy word of God. Now, our president at the recent ministerial breakfast said, oh, I'm a Christian. Well, that's easy to say. Jesus spoke about that in Mark 7, verse 6. This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Luke 16, 15, you are they which justify yourselves before men by what you say, but God knows your heart. Titus 1, 16, they profess that they know God, but in works, daily living, they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Uh, it's the great judgment morning. And they're standing before Jesus in Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23. And they said, Lord, Lord, ha! Have we not prophesied, witnessed, talked about our faith in your name? And in your name have cast out devils? And in your name have done many wonderful works? Then will I, Jesus, profess and say unto them, Depart from me, you bunch of sinners. I never knew you. He doesn't say that to those who really have it. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. I know them they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. There are two groups there. Now listen very carefully. The reason that I don't believe he's a Christian is because in the Chicago Sun-Times, his interview stated, I believe there are many ways to heaven, not just Jesus. Anyone who says that, plus 56% of the evangelicals of America who are now saying it because they're sitting in churches that don't give them meat, don't give them doctrine, proves that they're all lost. You cannot say there are many ways to heaven without denying Christ and calling a Christ a deceiver and a liar. What? Listen to Jesus, John 5, 39 and 40. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. You've missed it. They are they which testify of me, talk about me. You won't come to me that you might have life. I can go on and on. John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, Jesus said, has everlasting life. John 8, 24, You die in your sins if you believe not. I am he, the Savior of the world. First John 4, 14. Let's keep going. John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. No other way. Listen to in verse 1. If any man climbs up any other way but the door, he's a thief and a robber. Jesus said that. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man, no man, no man can come unto the Father but by me. Now, if you say there are other ways, you're saying Christ is a deceiver, I repeat it, a liar, and you can't be saved. 
and our churches are full of these kind of people nowadays and they want to argue with you, stick to the Word of God. There's no other way but Jesus. 400 times it says so. 700 times it says without shedding of blood there is no remission of sins, Hebrews 9.22. And Christ shed His precious holy blood that you might be saved. And without Him, you'll never see the other side and be in heaven. Oh, Dick, how wonderful that our Lord died for us. We're thinking about that so very, very much during this time of the year. We think about Calvary, and we're going to be talking about that and His resurrection in a moment. But talk about the result of accepting the Lord. Take a look, please, at this very, very fine picture. Horatio Bonaire. And this is what he had to say. A Christian is a new man, a new man. Well, somebody that became a very much a new man, the conversion of St. Paul. Now, this was painted by Michelangelo, of course, and oh, I love his works. Well, St. Paul became a saint really after that conversion because he was killing Christians before he accepted the Lord Jesus as his Savior. What a changed man he was now. I may ask Jack, what are some of the signs of a new life, Jack? Well, first of all, when it's real, you're changed. We're raised to newness of life, Romans 6, verse 4. And Paul's the greatest example. Do you know that before his conversion, when he was on the Damascus Turnpike, he was out to get the Christians in Syria and kill them? It is estimated they had 500 Christians and the blood of those believers dripping from his fingers. And while he's on that road to go get more, there's a voice from heaven that says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you? Who are you, Jesus? And he found the Lord that day. Was he changed? In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 16, he gives his testimony as to his wonderful conversion. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, persecutor, injurious. I murdered hundreds of Christians. But in me first, Jesus Christ showed forth all long-suffering for a pattern unto them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. He said, when the Lord saved me, I was his eternal example and example, saying, if I can save this man who murdered my people, I can save anyone who will come to me. And I don't care what you've done, how often you've done it, how hideous, heinous your sin may appear in your own eyes. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin, 1 John 1, 7. Any kind of sin? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But he doesn't stop there. He says, and such were some of you, but you're washed. They came to Jesus and washed through the precious blood. And if you'll do that later in this program, you'll be ready to meet the Lord. Can you imagine meeting somebody who's never heard about Easter? Well, you know what? Even Hollywood has entered in to give us a beautiful, some beautiful films, The Gospel According to Hollywood. And uh, they say that they appointed countless people to Christianity. Now that picture is the King of Kings. It was done in 1927. Oh, so many other great... The greatest great love story ever told. The greatest love story ever told. Now, you notice there, the gospel. What is the gospel? That's so very, very important, isn't it, Jay? This one who got converted on the Damascus Turnpike, the one who had killed Christians, is now saved. And he's talking to the Corinthian church. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, he says, I declare unto you the gospel, the good news. What is it? Verses 3 and 4, that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And Paul could say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. But there are many today who say, oh, there are other ways to heaven, along with our president, Oprah Winfrey, and the rest of that New Age crowd. And listen to what God says about that. 
if there's any other gospel in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you're really in trouble. That goes for you 56% of the evangelical world now, too, that has put away the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus as the only way. Galatians 1, 8, 9, Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if anyone preach any other gospel in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, let him be accursed. Look it up in Webster's Dictionary. A curse means doomed, damned, and fright in the fire. You're in trouble with God. Mm, and you know, when we were doing some pictures in Jack's office years ago, the one you're going to see right now on the screen. Oh, it's my favorite picture of the cross. The Lord is looking down on the world, and he died for our sins. Oh, Jack, I think this is your favorite picture, too, on Let the cross. have you leave it there so you can keep your eyes on Jesus instead of me. You know, next week, I'm going to shock the world. I'm going to have another message on the cross in Easter. Do you know that all of these things can be found in the Old Testament of Judaism? That Christ is God? That he was born of a virgin, that he died on the cross, shedding his blood to save sinners, that he was raised from the dead, that he's coming again. It's all there. If you have a Jewish friend, you let him know. But let's look at this from a Jewish scripture right now. Isaiah 53, beginning with verse 3. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. But he died for all of us. Look at that cross. Think about receiving them in a few moments from now. I'm going to go right on here with another picture. Ever in God's hands. Christ and the good thief who accepted him even while he was hanging by his side. Remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. Jack, there's a picture. Rexella, that's it. Picture. Nine words. Preachers make it so hard for you to get to heaven. He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Nine words, is that enough? Jesus said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. When I pass, you'll pass with me. Oh, what a wonderful Jesus. Oh, and here's a, a young man who accepted the Lord. He was of the, the Islamic faith, Michael Yusuf, and he has a PhD, and he's written this very fine book, When the Crosses Are Gone, Restoring Sanity to a World Gone Mad. This is what he had to say, for America today, decline is not a condition, decline is a choice. And the decision turns on what you and I decide to do with the cross of Christ. Will we stand by it? Will we defend it boldly and unashamedly today before the crosses are gone? We must choose. There is only one rational choice, my friend, there is only one decision for us to make. We must choose the cross of Christ. Well, our president went to uh, one of the universities. Georgetown. In Georgetown. And he said, you must cover the crosses or I cannot speak. Oh, my, oh, my. What a shame it is that that was the request of our president, covering the cross. We must proclaim the cross, proclaim the message, the resurrection of our Lord. It's the only Day. way to be saved. That's why I wonder about his salvation. Listen to me. Christ made peace through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1.20. You don't believe it? You don't want to have anything to do with it? The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved as the power of God. Amen. And that's 1 Corinthians 1.18. You become an enemy of the cross of Christ when you put down that precious message like many evangelicals are doing, as well as our president. Paul could say, I determined not to know anything about you except Christ crucified the cross the only way. 
Oh, yes. What a great day it is to remember the resurrection of our Lord. We worship a risen Savior. Here we see it on the screen right now, the great solution, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And certainly we have to celebrate this wonderful, wonderful event, the resurrection of our Savior. You cannot get to heaven if you don't believe in the resurrection, Romans 10, 9. And Rexella, we were in the Holy Land. And you had the holy privilege of standing by the empty tomb and singing about Christ raising up again from the dead. And scores of requests have come to us asking us to have Rexella move our hearts with that glorious thought once again. Folks, I don't cry very easily. Touched my heart. The empty tomb and my precious girl standing there giving that message. Do you want this Jesus today? Pray this with me, please. Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying for my sin. Thank you for saving me. Say it, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I love you, Jesus, for what you did for me. And today, I want to ask you to come into my heart. In your precious name, Jesus, amen. 
Oh, amen. What a beautiful time of the year to open your heart to the risen Savior. If you did, you pray that prayer right to me. I'll send you this little book called First Steps in a New Direction. There's my address. Oh, I'd love to hear from you. So please write to me. and I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you. Whoa, you're walking with the risen Savior. Now, let me just say, friends, this is a brand new offer. Enemies of the cross of Christ. Take a look, please. The Apostle Paul, who slaughtered hundreds of Christians before his conversion to Christ, was forgiven and chosen to expose the enemies of the cross of Christ. Today, 132 nations proclaim their hatred for Christianity. Who are these ungodly enemies? Atheists, New Agers, cultists, Christian defectors, and Muslims. On billboards, atheists call our Lord a useless savior. New Agers state through Dr. Shookman's course on miracles, promoted on Oprah Winfrey's show, that a slain Christ has no meaning. So do not make the pathetic air of clinging to the old rugged cross. Worse yet, Wycliffe, Sills, and Frontier Bible translators created a new version for Muslims eliminating Christ as the Son of God 91 times. By doing this, they've destroyed Christianity's message. This act denying that Jesus is the Son of God identifies these three translation groups as enemies of the cross of Christ and Antichrist 1 John 2.22. Why did they do it? Since Muslim invaders entered Jerusalem in 637, they did away with all crosses. And that's the way it's been ever since. These 21st century enemies of the cross recently promoted ads on Australian television saying, move over Jesus for a new savior. For a complete study and expose on all these groups, order enemies of the cross. It's so important that you have this. Here's our announcement to tell you how you can receive it, Chuck. Thank you, Rex Allen, my friend, to order Enemies of the Cross. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. Don't allow your family and your church to be deceived. There's 800 number, order it. Enemies of the cross, who are they and what are they doing? Friends, I would like to leave you with a wonderful thought from my heart. How do I know he lives? I talk to him today. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.